so much for coming. Um, the Science Circle is, is for people that are interested in science, and I think a lot of us are have uh, professional backgrounds in science, and a lot of us probably are just interested in what's going on. So usually I'm presenting something related to my professional training in genetics, but today I'm way on the other side of the spectrum. And I'm just sharing my adventures in an area that is totally out of my range of expertise, which is mathematics. Um, and last year in math club uh, that, that Tagline runs, I became obsessed with triangles. And I would like to share some of that obsession with you today. Triangles are polygons with three sides. And you don't often hear them called trigons, but you could call them trigons. And you'll recognize this as being related to uh, a field of mass that's based on the measurement of triangles, which is trigon or trigonometry, trigonometry. So I'm just going to say a few things about triangles that I'll be referring to later on. Uh, triangles come in several variants. There are the equilateral triangles, which all three, in which all three sides are exactly the same. Uh, there's right triangles, which have one angle that's 90 degrees, one rectangle. Um, isosceles triangles, which have two sides that are the same. Um, and the angle, uh, the top angle, or the, the uh, angle between the two sides can either be acute or uh, obtuse. It could be a little bit flatter and fatter. Uh, and then you have the scalene triangles, which have uh, sides of three different sides. And triangles are sort of magical because the angles in the corners are related to the relative lengths of the side. So the equilateral triangles all have the same angle in each corner. They're all they're all 60 degree angles. Uh, there's right triangles which uh, have to have the 90 degree angle, um, and then the other the other sides can be any size that will, will fit in with that. Uh, I'll talk more about those later. Um, Isosceles triangle are going to have equal angles opposite the two equal sides. And then, of course, in scalene triangles, all of the angles are different. So right triangles are special. Right triangles could be either isosceles right triangles. I don't know if you call them that or not. But they can either have two sides the same or they can be scalene with all three sides, uh, both the two sides and the hypotenuse, different from one another. And the reason that they're special is that the two sides have a fixed relationship to what's each, uh, to, to what's called uh, the theta angle. This one right here. So the side that's opposite uh, the right angle is the hypotenuse, and it's always the longest side. And then the relative lengths of the other two sides and the hypotenuse produce a ratio dependent on their length. So that if you have any two of these values, um, you can calculate the third one. So, so example, if you have uh, uh, the opposite side plus, uh, plus a, an angle, you can calculate the hypotenuse, you can calculate the other side. So say you want to know how high a building is. You can measure the distance to the building. So you could measure what would be this side of the triangle. 
and then you could uh, calculate or you could uh, measure the angle between the ground and the top of the building. And then you could calculate the height of the building with the cosine um, of the angle that you have measured. So it's handy. Uh, and now, of course, that's why it's trigonometry, because it's measurements done with triangles. So we have these trigonometric tables. This is just part of them, but you can kind of see them. And each of those uh, relationships, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, uh, the relationships of the side to the hypotenuse, and the relationship of the sides uh, to each other, are all included in there. And they're given for all of the angles up to uh, 90 degrees, I think. And so you can use those tables to uh, calculate stuff. So it's, uh, it's kind of cool. And you probably learned all of this in high school. Okay. All right. So there are a couple of special triangles. There's this classic isosceles right triangle where you have uh, the two sides are both the same. And in that case, uh, the two sides have a one-to-one -one ratio to each other. Uh, and then the, uh, the hypotenuse is always the square root of two times whatever the, uh, the length of the sides is. So you're familiar with that one. Oh, and and the, the two angles are always 45 degrees. There is the famous three, four, five Pythagorean right triangle. Uh, the relative lengths of the sides are, are kind of pretty. Uh, the angles, alas, are not. You can give me some nice, pretty number, but they're not. It's uh, it's you know 36 plus a lot of uh, decimal places after that, and um, so it's not quite 37. But anyway, the, the, the right triangle itself is quite nice. And there are other Pythagorean right triangles that you may know about. 5, 12, 13, for example, or 7, 24, 25, things like that. OK, so that's just kind of basic triangle stuff. So how did I get upset with triangles? Well, I am not a mathematician. I'm a biologist. Um, I taught a non-major course here on Genome Island for 14 years. Um, and while I was teaching during that time, I did not stray very far from Genome. I didn't. Uh, I, I visited the uh, other Sims that uh, used to be in the Simons. There used to be a whole bunch of science-related islands around Genome. And uh, so I would sometimes, you know, go over and see one of those. But most of the time, I stayed pretty close to home. But since I retired, I've been looking at some of the other uh, less formal educational opportunities in Second Life. And one of those is Tagline's Math Club. And anybody who knows me well, is going to say, what are you doing in a math club? Because my math background is very, very minimal. I only took the math that was required for my major, which in the ancient days when I was an undergraduate, uh, did not go past trigonometry. So that's all the formal math I have. Uh, well, plus some statistics that I got later in the day. That's about it. So I am arithmetically literate, I would say. I can, I can, you know, add and subtract and divide and multiply. Um, I can calculate a, a 15 or 20 percent tip. I can do my taxes. Um, I can figure out uh, the progeny for dihybrid and trihybrid individuals if any cross. Um, so I, I, I can do basic arithmetic, but that's, uh, that's about it. But there are some real mathematicians here in Second Life. Um, and some of them share their stuff, like tag, in the math club. And this is what I re regard as the secret superpower of Second Life. This is, as you know, uh, an amazing educational environment. And those opportunities are available to anybody who comes in here, uh, including 
dumb biologists who want to know a little bit more, more about math. Um, so there are real mathematicians here in Texas. Um, and uh, in the math club right now, we're talking about the history of economics, which is really, really interesting. But anyway, hanging around in the math club is how I got obsessed with triangles. So this is what happened. Okay, so I'm looking at a triangle, and here's a nice equilateral triangle, and it's got uh, all triangles. And this is one of the magical things about triangles, I think. All triangles have this constant um, sum of 180 degrees in their three angles. Um, I, I think there's probably mathematical reasons why that's the case, but they do. <laughs> uh, and then rectangles always have 360 degrees because they have four right angles, regardless of the, of, you know, the relative uh, size of their, uh, of their, their top and sides. Um, and so I was looking at those and I thought, okay, well, what about pentagons? What number goes in the pentagon? What is the, what's the sum of the angles in the pentagon? And what's the common angle? So I had to apply my fearsome arithmetic powers to figure this out. So what I did was to uh, start off with my triangle, which uh, I knew had 180 degree angles, and I divided the rectangle into two triangles, each of which had 180 degree angles, and so the rectangle had a total of 360, which I already knew, so that was good. So I said, okay, I'm gonna make a pentagon by stacking another triangle on top of the rectangle. So it's not a very pretty pentagon, but it's got five sides. Uh, and I looked at it, okay. So I put all of the triangles so that the corners came together so that they would all contribute to the total angle, the uh, total sum of the uh, angles on the other side. Uh, so that added up to 540, which told me uh, if I divided it by five, then the average size of the interior angle would have to be 108 degrees. So I'm feeling very proud of myself. And suddenly, all of these bright flashes start going off in my brain, and the math moron discovers the math rule, which is every additional side you add to a polygon adds 180 degrees to the total internal angle. Wow! Polygons are made out of triangles. So for about 15 seconds, I felt like a mathematician. Didn't last long. But anyway, that, so that's how I got into this. So I started thinking, oh, what about polygons? What about triangles? I know they're kind of triangles within polygons. So I started looking at them. Uh, so first off, let's redraw my, my ugly pentagon. So as you, as you know, there's more than one way to divide up a pentagon. You can divide it up into equal triangles, like the one on the right, this one here. So you've got a five triangle pentagon. Um, or you can divide it up from edge or from edge to edge, instead of going from edge to the center, like this one, from edge to the center. Uh, then you can go from a common point to all of the edges and divide it up that way. And that gives you a three triangle pentagon. So how many triangles you have in the pentagon depends on where you put the triangle. So if you're looking at a typical um, even evenly divided uh, pentagon, then your your angles are, you've got 360 degrees in, in the total interior angle. Uh, and each of those, if you divide that into, no, if you multiply that, but if you divide that into five, uh, then you've got 72 degrees for each one. And then on the edges, you have that 108 degrees that I mentioned a while ago. And those are divided between the two adjacent triangles to 54 degrees on each corner. That splits the interior angle. Okay, so um, a typical polygon then 
looks like this. So this is an octagon. All of the triangles are the same. Now, all of them are isosceles triangles with their, with their, their points meeting in the middle. Uh, there is one pentagon. It's made up of equilateral triangles. Which one is it? actually tried to read it that way. Okay, well, it's not just octagon. Okay, um, hexagons are all equilateral triangles. So all of their angles are, are, are 60 degrees. Okay, so this is a typical polygon game. Uh, divided up into eight triangles meeting in the middle. So the number of sides for the polygon is the same as the number of triangles. Uh, but in the atypical polygon, why, why are those different? So the reason they're different is this. Sorry, I'm waiting, to, waiting for it to become clear. Okay, um, so you've got you've got the typical kind of eight triangle polygon and the atypical six sided six or six triangle polygon that uh, that fans out from uh, from one edge. Now, if you take the middle of the typical polygon and then you drag it down, like this. So that the center comes down to the point, then what you get is this atypical one because the bottom two triangles are wiped out when you pull the middle down to the edge. So they are more or less equivalent, it's just that you can't see the bottom two triangles when you, when you pull them down that way. So when you're when you're if you're trying to, to calculate your interior angles um, from eight triangles, then you always have to subtract uh, the 360 degrees in the middle. Or you can just subtract your two triangles to begin with and, and multiply and divide that way. Okay, so how cool is that? Okay, so in an atypical polygon, obviously all of the triangles aren't the same. Um, there is an obtuse isosceles triangle on either side of the points where um, the, the lines converge. Um, and then there's a scalene in, in, the, in an octagon with a scalene triangle in between them. And then there's the right triangle up Near the top, so there's several. So there's several different triangle sizes. If you if you aren't uh, using the typical di subdivision of the polygon into triangles. So I was looking at some other po some other polygons and drawing triangles in them and. Um, there were other patterns that, that, then, that then appeared, which you know many of you probably are very familiar with, but I was not. Um, so the angles formed by the triangles follow um, a numerical pattern up and down both sides. There's always an obtuse isosceles triangle at opposite edges on, on both sides from, uh, from where the lines converge. Um, and the acute angles of the convergence point are always the same, just like they are when the triangles are just scattered around uh, the, the middle um, when, when they're when they're in a circle, like when there's eight of them instead of six. Okay, and uh, if you've got an even number of polygons, there's always a right triangle right at the center of the cr cluster, and if you're an, an odd number of polygons, there's always an isosceles triangle at the center.
like this. So here's a pentagon and a hexagon. So pentagon's odd, hexagon's even. Okay, so here's the obtuse equilateral, or, or not equilateral, sorry, the, the obtuse isosceles triangle. Uh, and then there's no scaling triangle in this one, but here's the right side. It's across the middle. So this is this is the simplest possible pattern uh, for an even number uh, for uh, for triangles. Okay, and then for an odd number one, you've got these three with the uh, isosceles triangle. So I'm just going to run through a few other examples. So here's an octagon and a nonagon. Okay, so there's a total of uh, uh, 1,080 uh, degrees in, in all the interior angles. And so the, uh, the corner angle is 135. Uh, and you can see when you're going up the line, um, the acute angle here at the base is 22 and a half, and then that's double to 45, and then you add another 22 and a half, so you have 67 and a half. And then if you go on to the next one, what's this one going to be? How many degrees in that angle? Okay, well, you're going from 67 and a half to 90. So you're, get, you're getting the other uh, 90 degree triangle on that side of this. Yes, and, uh, and I like the symmetry of this. I, I, it's, uh, it's almost biological. And then in this one over here, you've got uh, 140 degrees at, um, at the at the interior angle uh, with 20 degrees, and then that goes up to 40 and 60 and 80. Um, and it's, sort of, it's a nice pattern. It's a nice pattern. It looks, yeah, it looks a little bit like conch shell, exactly. Okay, so here's a bigger one. I'm just, I'm waiting for it to become visible to me. Okay, so here's a dodecagon and a tridecagon. So you've got 12 and 13 sides. And as you can see, we, we still have those same principles. Uh, we still got the obtuse isosceles at the base, uh, and then several scalene triangles going up the sides here. Um, and then with the dodecagon, dodecagon, you've got the uh, the right angle, the right angle, the right triangle here, right at the center, uh, and then in the tridecagon, which is an uneven number, um, you've got uh, this isosceles triangle in the middle. So they they all follow that pattern, which is perhaps not too surprising because if any of them do it, I guess we're all going to do it. But it's sort of fun to watch. So. Here's one more. Come on, you just give up. Okay. So this is a hexadecagon. So it's got 16 sides. And as we increase the number of the triangles in the polygon, we're sort of creeping up on 180 degrees. So it's getting us closer and closer and closer to a circle. Uh, and as you know, you can you can uh, calculate the area of a circle by uh, modifying the formula for calculating the area of a triangle. Maybe we'll talk about that more in a little while, but um, I'm just warning you that may be coming up. Okay, so um, if you look at the I don't know how well you can see the numbers, but if you if you look at uh, at the angles. Of the interior angles, the interior angle here is uh, 
出てましたよ。さすがにあの時ちょっと、はい。あの、so it's getting bigger and bigger. So let's get serious. So let's think about a 49 or a 50 sided pentagon, polygon. And I did not try to draw, draw that one, but even without drawing it, I could still calculate what it should look like. So、uh, if you have 47,、uh, sorry, a, a 49 sided polygon, an Enneakitesera conchidon,、um, that's a mouthful.、Um, and then the 50 sided polygon is a pentaconchidon. So there's the 47. Edged edge triangles、um, in the 49 gone, and there's 48 in the other one. And so you can go ahead and calculate what the interior angles are going to be. And there's, you know, they're still creeping up on 180, but they're going very, very slowly. Between、um, 49 and 50, there's just about 0.2、uh, degrees difference in those basal angles. And of course, the, the acute angles are getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so the top angle at the midpoint、um, of the pentacontagon, which is an even number,、uh, is 86.4. So the next angle is going to be what? Yes, they have names. <laughs> So,、um, I'm going to finish with、um, just, just some commentary on, on how you get from the area of the triangle to、uh, the area of the circle. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is that I used to put, my sleep, put myself to sleep、uh, by doing this. So,、uh, this one of those things you can relax with. So, the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. The area of a circle, as you know, is pi r squared. So the circumference of the circle all the way around、um, is 2 pi r.、Um, and the circumference of the circle is the same as the base of the triangle. The radius of the circle, the r, is the same as the height of the triangle. And so the, the、uh, circle then is 1 half times 2 pi r times. R, which is pi r squared. So that is math and magic. And do you have any questions? Thank you so much. And, 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 I, and I would like to recommend、uh, that you visit the math club because it's a lot of fun. <laughs>